A policeman who spent seven years undercover in an environmental protest group defied instructions and wasn't properly supervised. Those are the conclusions of a review by the police inspectorate, which is also called for better oversight of officers who carry out covert work. Our Home Affairs correspondent Tom Simons reports. Mark Stone was his cover name, dedicated green activist. But actually, he was Mark Kennedy, PC Kennedy. And for seven years, he infiltrated environmentalists who were finally arrested before they broke into this power station. A case against them collapsed because his activities weren't fully revealed. Today's report finds no senior officer had a complete picture of what he was doing. During his years in the protest movement, he went abroad without permission. He had intimate relationships with at least two protesters. The man responsible for police standards says undercover officers must be better supervised. Constant vigilance, much more regular testing beyond the point of approval, which we recommend, training people, authorising officers, and people called cover officers who do the welfare piece, if you like, Plans to infiltrate direct action groups should be signed off by the Independent Office of Surveillance Commissioners, the report concludes. But even if there was a new code of conduct, it's likely it wouldn't be published because anyone who suspected they were the subject of an undercover operation would be able to test out their theory by seeing what an undercover officer was and wasn't prepared to do. With better oversight, the report says the use of undercover officers like Mark Kennedy within protest movements is lawful and ethical and can prevent serious criminal activity. Tom Simons, BBC News. Now, a review by the police inspectorate says long-term undercover operations should be approved in advance by high-level authorities outside of the force. As we've been telling you, inspectors call for tighter controls after examining the case of Mark Kennedy, a policeman who spent seven years undercover. They found he went against instructions and he wasn't properly supervised. Well, Peter Blixley was a founding member of Scotland Yard's undercover unit, spent ten years working on covert operations. Mm -hmm. Very good morning to morning, you. Morning, Peter. Well, first of all, what do you make uh, uh, this analysis of, of the problems and how it should work in the future? I think the analysis is uh, largely correct. But um, what I'm disappointed is that I don't hear the words accountability and responsibility being mentioned because not only was Mark Kennedy and his cohorts individually responsible for what they did, but also the managers and the supervisors who quite clearly have failed to do their job, who I would suggest have been neglectful in their duty, all these matters need, uh, need to be satisfied so that the public um, gets some answers. The report did talk about a lack of supervision and when you look at what Mark Kennedy was doing, he was offering help to the Green campaigners that he had infiltrated. He admitted he had relationships with, with two of the women involved as well. Would supervision have stopped that? Uh, it should have done and his cover officer should have been uh, so close to him that he knew what Kennedy's state of mind was and what he was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark Kennedy, uh, as I understand it, entered into long-term intimate relationships with people, which is completely and utterly unacceptable. You know, he's a public servant, and this type of misconduct, you know, shouldn't happen again in the future. All right, undercover policing has unique challenges like no other sphere of policing. There has to be an element of free spirit about an undercover cop. But there is a difference between free spirit and a loose cannon. Well, give us, I mean, this is an area for a lot of us we know virtually nothing about. You've worked undercover in those situations for long periods of time. Or what was the longest period of time you were in an undercover operation? Uh, on one operation with a day-to-day -day commitment, six months. So in that period of time, how often are you communicating with the people who are checking what you're doing? Daily. I would speak to my cover officer every day. Okay. Without doubt. And so in that, in that situation, that sounds like, was that, that was routine practice, was it? Yes, of course, because my cover officer is my window on the world. He's my reconnect with family, with friends. He's also the go-between between, between what I'm doing on a daily basis, dealing with the bad guys and the management. It's a very, really vital role. What sort of bad guys were you dealing with? What did you do over your ten years? In my career, I bought tons and tons of drugs weapons, I pretended to be a contract killer, and I operated on a virtually daily basis against very, very serious, nasty, organised criminals. 
You talked about the unique challenges of, of that kind of work. Is there an inevitability that some people during this process will respond to it, if you like, better than others? I mean, I don't know what your experience is of people who also worked in that field of work, your colleagues. Are there people who found it hard to make that distinction, to, to not get too close to the people they're working alongside? Sometimes the demarcation lines get blurred. And sometimes people perhaps become too fond of, uh, of perhaps what they're buying, you know, in the drug world, for example, and all that kind of thing. And believe you me, I was far from perfect as an undercover cop. But, you know, nearly 20 years ago, when we as founding fathers of SO10, the undercover unit at the yard, you know, we had the rules and the regulations. We had the best practice. We were the founders of all that kind of stuff. And yet, here we are, you know, two decades later, and the foundation stones that we laid for undercover policing were quite clearly trampled on and ignored by Kennedy and his cohorts. But how difficult is it if you're deeply embedded within an operation? You've got to be convincing, clearly, otherwise your cover's going to be blown, and you're having to talk to your supervising officer on a daily basis. Sometimes, it, was, it, was, it, was it hard to, to think, OK, I'm, I'm here for an operation and I've got to conclude this? Was sometimes you drawn too closely to, you can, towards the people you were dealing with? You can always find the time to communicate with your cover officer. The secret of the word is in, is in cover. You know, you have a cover with that guy so you can speak to him or her. You know, you can make your excuses. It's part of, of your portfolio, part of your legend, if you will. You know, and, and you know, it's, it's been... The people that Kennedy operated against have been described, some of them, by a judge as decent people exercising their lawful right to protest. Kennedy and the other officers who were doing this work was a shameful waste of public resources and public money. Undercover policing is such a vital tool in law enforcement. So you don't think he should have been there in the first place? Not at all. There are people watching this programme today who are alive due to the creativeness and the audacity and the bravery of undercover officers. Well, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because that suggests, in a way, that part of what compromised him was possibly that he thought his cause was not a genuine risk to the public? I mean, is, is there a danger of that happening? If you, don't believe, if you don't believe you're genuinely fighting something worthwhile, then you don't do the job you should. Kennedy spoke of the creative stuff that he'd done with his fellow protesters. What are we talking about? Serious and organised basket weaving or yoghurt making? I mean, what the hell was he up to? You know, undercover policing... You know, they're valuable resources. They should be targeted against the very serious of criminality, not people's legitimate right to democratically protest. Peter Blexley, former undercover police officer for 10 years. Thank you very much for being with us this morning.